you are role-playing your Dungeons and Dragons character wrong. All right, that sounded disgusting. Um, so today we are going to be talking about role-playing in D&D and how we can get better at it as players. Let's get to it. All right, well, I hope you guys don't feel as disgusting as I do. Um, that was uh, really weird for me to do. Um, so we're going to be just talking about general stuff in order to be able to make our ability to role-play our player characters better. That's really what this video is about. And um, if you stayed around, thank you for staying. Um, my name's Howie, or Howard, or whatever you want to call me. Um, Blue Collar DM, whatever. Uh, this is the Blue Collar DM YouTube channel. We are uh, dedicated to breaking down barriers for new players and dungeon masters alike. Uh, if you have any questions as we're going through any of this, comment section's great. But I also stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Twitch. The link for that Twitch stream is uh, uh, down in that description down there. But um, so, like we were saying, we want to talk about how to role play in D and D, and just kind of the different ways that we can actually enhance our abilities. And I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions on how role playing actually should be done in Dungeons and Dragons, whether it be because we watch a lot of um, Twitch streams or we watch a lot of online RPGs or we have an idea what we think we should do. We see a lot of people using accents and stuff like that and we feel like if we're not doing that then we're not role playing well. And I'm here to tell you that that's not necessarily the case. You don't need to ham it up and like kind of lean into those stereotypical uh, horny bards or um, wizards that only cast fireball, although Jacob, uh, you keep doing you those videos are hilarious but um we don't need to necessarily lean into those stereotypical tropes and also a lot of times people have this notion that if you have a unoptimized character or even if you have an optimized character that um role playing is easier or it's uh, better because you have deficiencies in your abilities and that makes for better role play i think that we are kind of using those things as scapegoats, or not scapegoats, that's not the word. I think we're just kind of being lazy, I think is the best way to put it. Uh, if you have ever done any uh, acting or any kind of uh, improv classes or anything like that, you know that just having a, you know, stereotypical kind of, um, um, you know, stock character to lean in if you're going to play a horny bard or a, you know, a fighter of a noble background or something like that, like... It doesn't really give your character all that much life because you're really just playing a stock character and if you're just leaning into being clumsy or you're just leaning into being uncharismatic or edgy or whatever you're not really role playing you're just kind of playing a stereotype which that's not really what your character is i mean some characters can be stereotypes like it's one way you can play and and this isn't meant to be a video to tell you knew that the way you play the game is wrong despite what the title and the intro said um, yeah, okay, that might be a little confusing. Um, I think what I'm trying to say basically is that we need to actually look into who our character actually is, what their background is, what they actually uh, idealize and what their bonds and flaws are, and utilize those to actually kind of put ourselves in that character's shoes. Now, we're not gonna be able to perfectly role play exactly who this character is because there's going to be some flavor of what we bring to the character which is what kind of makes Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, Starfinder, any kind of role-playing RPG where you're playing at a tabletop with your friends fun because it's bringing your own flair to the character but you're also embodying something that maybe you're not necessarily comfortable with or maybe it's something that you don't have experience with but you have to kind of interpret what that character is feeling in a given situation. So one thing I kind of want to do here as we're going through this is I actually want to jump into some character sheets here, actually from the uh, the starter set from the uh, Dungeons and Dragons starter set to kind of give you guys some ideas of what I'm talking about when I say we're not necessarily just our ability scores or we're not necessarily just a trope or a stereotype. So let's actually jump over to the computer right now. I'm going to actually have a weird, funny transition here. There, I found it. Uh, I have to look at two screens. It's kind of weird. Um, so here we have the Lightfoot Halfling Rogue uh, with the criminal background from the starter set. So a lot of people would initially think maybe this is going to be an edgy character just because it kind of makes sense. Um, there's a little bit of that in here, but we kind of have to think about it a little bit differently than just stereotypical, like I'm going to be an edge lord and I'm going to like have a dark past and I'm like edgy. And we need to think about it some, a little bit differently. We actually need to put ourselves in the frame of mind of what this character's experiences have been in the past and utilize that to kind of inform our decisions and inform how we interact with our fellow party members, with NPCs, whatever is going on in the world. We got to utilize that. So 
I know I still talked in this small picture up in the corner and I apologize for that, but the reason why is because I want you guys to have some time to look at this character sheet. So one thing that I like to do, um, I do like to look and see what they're good at and what they're bad at because it tells me a little bit about what they've done training wise or what their um, physicality is, which is still nice to have. But I don't like to lean in only to that. Like, okay, he's we have this Lightfoot Halfling. He's got an eight strength, which is just a minus one to his ability score. So he's not average. He's not like super weak. He's just like on average, he's going to be a little bit weaker than a stereotypical humanoid, which as a Halfling, that kind of makes sense. You're a smaller individual with smaller body mass. Like it just kind of works out that way. Uh, and so necessarily being like, oh, it's a pity little Halfling that's weak. He can barely lift anything. Oh, he's so, uh, that's not really what you're going for or what you should be looking for and even still having a really high charisma and a really good intelligence doesn't really tell us the whole story like yes maybe this guy's good with people but maybe he's good with people in certain social situations and that's why he's so good if we actually look into his actual skills here and again we're not going to only look at the skills and stuff i i know i said that don't just look at this but it, it, it has some importance here if we look into it, like he's good at deception and he's good at performance, but persuasion he's not proficient in, and um, he's also not good at intimidation. So maybe he is a little bit more of someone who can talk his way through things and be deceptive, but he's not going to be somebody who's going to persuade somebody to do something that he wants them to do. So think about that for a little bit. I apologize if I just blew you up on the mic. My mic is down here, and it's uh, and it probably just blew you up again because I just looked down at it. Um, but what I like to focus on when I'm going through a character sheet, especially if it's one that like I'm just being handed a character sheet by the dungeon master if I'm playing the starter set, or if I'm making my own character, I like to look at my traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. And the reason why I do this is because it allows me to kind of think about, okay, if these are my experiences and this is how I feel, what experiences created these traits, bonds, and flaws? And how did I arrive in this situation? So I look here and I see I never have a plan, but I'm great at making things up as I go along. Also, the best way to get me to do something is to tell me I can't do it. So for this character, and I'm doing this completely fresh, like I didn't look at this character sheet before. I've actually on stream looked at the ones above this. So I specifically came into this one to give you the raw kind of like how I break down things. So with someone that's like this, we probably all know somebody in our life that um, never really has a plan. They always kind of just make things up on the spot. They're spontaneous. They like trying new things. They like kind of jumping into things, um, but also, this person also says that the best way to get me to do something is to tell me I can't do it. So maybe they like a challenge. Maybe they like being told like, oh, well, I'm better at you than this. So there's no way you could possibly do this. That gets them energized and gets them excited. I'm like, oh yeah, well, I'll show you. So maybe they have a little bit of that going on. So we can already see that this isn't really an edgelord. I mean, they have a criminal background and they're a rogue, but we're already seeing here just based on the personality traits, they like to make things up as they go along. They're spontaneous. They don't like to come up with plans. They are kind of that person who you say you're going to hang out with for the weekend, but you never know what shenanigans you're going to get into, and then you end up in a different city in a different state somehow. That's the kind of character it looks like that this player is. And so that's actually really interesting. And we all know someone like this, so we can kind of envision putting ourselves in the shoes of someone like that and kind of making our decisions as we're playing our game with that certain personality trait. So we got some general ideas, but these are all still generalizations. We have an idea of kind of like how they like to interact with people and stuff like that. But let's see what they actually personally believe in as being important. So that's where the ideals and bonds come in. So for ideals, people, I'm people. I'm loyal to my friends. So, see, as you can see, this is raw because I just flubbed that. Um, sorry. Um, editing Howard, we're just leaving it alone. Um, people, <laughs> I'm loyal to my friends, not to any ideals. Everyone else can take a trip on the river sticks for all I care. All right, so interesting. So we have a very spontaneous person, but someone who only likes to stick with people that they trust and that they are close to, which you could still, you could, there may be a little bit of edginess in there, but I can still see this as, think of someone who's been wronged a lot in their life. Someone who's like had some experiences where people have taken advantage of situations with them because they think they're oblivious or maybe they leaned into that. You can tell me I can't do something and I'm going to try to do it. Maybe they had somebody say to them, well, hey, like, if you don't think you can steal these jewels, then I guess I'll just have to go find someone else. So then that person went into that. In fact, this character tried to go steal the jewels and did maybe successfully. And then maybe was turned in by that friend who got him to do that for a reward um, to find out, fi to find some, to basically find this person because maybe he was wanted. So you can see already. So again, 
A lot of really cool stuff going here, but not necessarily an edgelord who hides in the corner and sips his beer ominously. Um, Bonds. Quellen Elderland, my aunt, has a farm in Phandalin. Starter set characters, this makes sense. Uh, I always give her some of my ill-gotten games. So, despite all these things where they're spontaneous, they only trust their friends, everyone else can go to heck. Uh, they also, yeah, I said heck. Uh, that was uh, me trying to be PG-13, even though I haven't been this whole video. Um, and the best way to get them to do something is telling them they can't do it. They like to get into mischievous things. They um, like to just kind of shoot from the hip. But at the same time, they value their family and they value their aunt who maybe is struggling and they do anything they can to kind of help that individual um, survive and just kind of get by. So again, we still, this is a very complex character still with only getting into the ideals, bonds, and flaw, uh, ideals, bonds, and personality traits. And we've even gotten to the flaws. So the flaws we have here, my aunt never know, must never know the deeds I did as a member of the Red Brands. So the Red Brands is a, um, a specific faction in uh, in the Forgotten Realms and in, uh, in and around Phandalin, I, I guess. Uh, but um, so for this particular character, they feel some sort of guilt in what they're doing. So while they are kind of a criminal by trade and by necessity, they like to make things up as they go along. They, you know, really only trust a small group of people. At the same time, they aren't very proud of their accomplishments, it would appear, based on the fact that they don't want their aunt to know everything that they've done in their life. So you can see how this could be a very conflicted character. Not necessarily an edgelord, someone who's very bombastic and very charismatic and maybe someone who you'd like to get a drink with and have a good fun time out partying. But at the same time, they're kind of ashamed of things that they've done in their past. And that's a very complex character to play. And what I want you guys to try to do is think about these things. Think about what these characters actually feel, not what you think they should feel, not like not just going based off their ability scores like, oh, they're probably really silly and I'm going to play them really... Okay, fine. Yeah, sure. Horny bards are a thing. You can make a backstory with a horny bard. That's fine. If you want to do that, go right ahead. But if you're making a character and you give it these kind of personality traits and stuff like that, and you really kind of dive deep into their backstory and what they're kind of all about, what you should be doing is trying to embody that person in the way you can kind of transfer your own mind into that player, into that player character. We're not trying to necessarily just ham up a certain trope we're trying to come up with how would we feel if we were an individual like this have we ever been in a situation where we didn't want maybe our parents or a friend of ours to know something that we did that maybe they wouldn't be very proud of i'm sure we've all done something like this in our lives i um i'd love to get a tattoo and not tell my mom but you know it's i haven't done it yet because of money but there's a lot of things in like my life that i've done that i'm not willing to share here <laughs> <sighs> probably shouldn't say that um but anyway um there's plenty of things that i'm sure that we've all done that we're not necessarily proud of and we can understand that feeling and how that would feel you can see um if uh, i don't know where i got this but it's cool so i'm just gonna keep drinking out of it um you can kind of see where i'm kind of going with this it's you want to actually put yourself in the shoes of this individual and feel those experiences and really trying to envision what it would be like to play this character as an actor would basically um and for some people that's easy some people it's not improv is hard some people acting is hard but we're not looking to necessarily be like the perfect actor with perfect emotions and feeling the no we're just trying to make decisions in our DD game and have conversations with npcs that are going to be informed by what our experiences are as the player character as the character we're playing that's really what it should be all about and um you can argue with me if you want down in the comment section that's totally fine i'm totally good with that but i want you guys to start thinking about your characters a little bit differently i don't want you to just think them necessarily of uh, what do my stats say or what character class am i playing and how am i gonna you know ham that up and make that really funny because those are not really genuine characters and for the most part i know there's a lot of feelings about like sometimes like in some games like characters last long you know long as four sessions and who cares on to the next one i've got another one played prepped ready to go you want to have um a personal experience with your character and really try to envision what it would be like to be that person in the world and react in the ways that they would react now this doesn't mean that i'm, I'm advocating well it's what my character would do that's 
we all know that if anyone actually says that, it's not what your character would do. You're just trying to troll. So I think this is a long way of saying that just be genuine. Try to be as genuine to your character is on the back to the backstory and the ideals, bonds, and flaws and personality traits that you created for them because the only way they actually really come to life is what you do with them and how you react in the game. And if you're just playing a trope or something like that, you might as well just cross out this section and just play a horny bard or play an edgelord, edgelord rogue or a paladin that uh, doesn't like the rogue in the party because he does something bad. Like, honestly, those aren't genuine interactions. So um, I think I've said long story short about six times, but let's just play some genuine characters from now on and actually feel feel something and pretend that we are the character and actually try to feel what they feel. And I think you'll find that your experiences will be that much better. Now, if you guys have had any questions over the course of this video, make sure you leave some comments down there, but also come down to that live stream, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Link for that down in the description below over in the Twitch stream. There we talk about more of this role-playing Dungeons and Dragons, campaign prep, campaign building. We also talk about a lot of virtual tabletops like Foundry, uh, Fantasy Grounds Unity, and even Roll20. So come on down there. I'll be able to help you guys with anything you're kind of dealing with in your Dungeons and Dragons game. I hope you guys learned something. I know this was a very long explanation for what normally people would think would be a very simple topic, but I wanted to make sure that I did it justice and I wanted to make sure that you guys actually got some value out of today's video. So. Like I said, I hope you guys learned something today, and until next time, happy gaming.